Alright, what's up guys? I'm Duke James. This is Portugal. I think most of you know that, but I just feel weird if I don't say that. I'm currently building a harbor in Lisbon, so harbor's rank 4 right now, so I'm going to upgrade that to rank 5. That should hopefully give me a lot of naval force limits. The other thing I could do for that is grab Grand Fleet ideas. I don't like the idea of taking that, though, but that would give me Naval Force Limit 3 and then Naval Force Limit Modifier plus 20%, so that would be a lot of Naval Force Limit. Definitely going to pick Trade for the next idea group, though, so that would be after Trade. But then I think there's other ideas, idea groups that I might want to pick as well. Global Domain doesn't look that bad as well. Exotics Demand plus 10%. Sex production plus 10%, national unrest negative 1, pathing harborage, infrastructure cost negative 10%, naval barrage cost negative 20%, don't really use that, trade steering 10%, a little bit of merchant trade power, a little bit of envoy travel time, movement speed on and off ships, eh, blockade efficiency, ship trade power propagation, that would definitely help with all the light ships that I have, leaders without upkeep plus 2 is nice, land attrition, ship trade power plus 20%, that is actually pretty huge con considering I have a lot of ship trade power right now so an additional 20% would be nice and then there's actually two diplomats at the end which would be nice as well diplomats are always good especially once you get into the bigger world and if I don't go if I choose not to do evangelical for the deus vault CB which is actually called empire of truth now more merchants are good to have more spy networks going. So there's that. That will be built soon. Hopefully. It's at 20, so... Earliest is a couple years that that will be built. I did get those heavies. Those heavies are being built now. I've moved troops down here. I think I mentioned attacking Fonte for this province. Because it has gold, it has 236,000 people living there, 462 size farmlands, 886 size forestries. I think I'm going to try to take this province and this province. This province has 125,000 people, 268 size farmlands, 400 size forestries. So, this one produces what? Uh, 21 units of food and this province produces 46 units of food so I can build irrigation here get a couple more units of food from that province and then do some investment into those provinces and we would have a lot of food and we need a lot of food unfortunately these people were just allied to Borgu but now they're allied to Igbo and Igbo is a country that doesn't seem that powerful but this area over here is very highly developed, and they have a lot of people living in this country. Just this province alone has 370,000 people. 100,000 right there. 895,000 peasants living in that province right there. That's like one, that's like 25% of the total amount of peasantry in my country living in that one province right there. So they have like 20,000 troops. They have 28,000 infantry and 1,000 cav, 3,000 artillery. I did grab this province in a expedition, so I'm going to lose that. They'll probably walk over here and grab these three provinces. I was building a fort here. It's not going to be completed before I go to war with them. I'm also building a fort here. That is not going to be completed before I go to war as well, but that should be fine because they shouldn't come over here. There's this province over here that uh, I can't get this for an expedition because you can only get coastal provinces through expeditions, so I sent a colonist there for that province. This province has 162,000 people living there. Oh, and then I also put uh, four... I put these ships over in the Congo, so I was able to get a merchant from that, but I'm going to take those off because I'm fighting up here. So I'll probably lose that merchant, but then I put that merchant, I believe, in the West Mediterranean. I was able to get a merchant from the Congo because I was able to send the ships there. I wasn't able before, but I am now. Ooh, that was a lot. 
I can take a breath now. And then the techs down here are actually... These guys, Fonte is tech 16, Igbo is tech 14, so they're not... They're not Mali level pushover. Mali's tech 11, so these guys actually might put up some of a fight. If Igbo was in, in here, then this would be... I wouldn't say easy, but doable. Hopefully, I'm able to uh, still win this war. I'm bringing down... What is this? 3,000 troops. So I have 12,000 troops down here. Good thing is, Fonte seems to only be four provinces. And this one is a level one, and that's a level two fort. Negative nine percent fort defense, so... Shouldn't be that hard to take. Hopefully I can defeat their navy. Alright, I'll go directly for their capital. Should I grab that province first, because I'm walking through it? Alright. May save that province if I can. Sack wipe thumb. Perfect. This should fall really quickly. It's the idea, at least. Status quo. No, no, no. No status quos. I also put a lot of investment into salt, because most of the provinces down here in Africa have salt. Sea salt size of around 45, and not a whole lot of investment in them, so I put about 10 ducats into each province, so that should also produce a lot of salt. I think I'm pretty good on salt now, but it's always good to have more salt, since that is a life need. Cheaper salt's always good. There's Igbo. Yeah, they grabbed that province. They weren't distracted over here, though. There's a lot of troops bordering me. Let's take this province. They don't want to fight, that's fine. Let's go ahead and spare them. Probably stack wipe these troops. I don't know what Borgu's mill tech is. Alright, that worked out. Looks like 17, 19,000 troops coming over here. You guys want to fight me? These troops are in the province. They'll be out May 10th. We're gonna get there May 11th. These guys should be stuck, so I think I should be able to stack wipe that 7k stack. Oh, they're gonna reinforce. Hmm. Just barely won that battle. Alright, I will just white piece these guys out. Get them out. Igbo, I think that was pretty much all of Igbo's army, so... Yeah, Igbo has 19,000... Infantry. That looks to be about 19,000, so... I'll take the war goal. They lost uh, 10,000 men, we lost 5,000 men. I also lost my ruler. I have a 333 now. Material cost for projects negative 10%. Labor cost for projects negative 10%. Yearly prestige plus 10. The irrigation that I was building in these provinces has built, so. For some reason, it was not building for a while, but they built now, so. And for some reason, these provinces are still like this, but I think they should eventually go away, hopefully. 
eventually, hopefully, go away. Alright, alignment. If I continue with the current leadership... This guy's a level 3 half-price advisor, so... I actually like him. And this guy's a level 2 commerce production and efficiency trade power broad guy. That also- so it only affects the spiritualists and the chiefs. The spiritualists are at zero, and the chiefs are at three. And the aristocrats are ending at 39, so if I began a new alignment and then aligned with the bureaucrats, that would make everybody mad. I'll just continue with the current leadership. That also saves some stability points as well. They actually give me what I want. They would not. It would do it. Okay, there'd be a giant coalition. Aquamu, Fonte, and Dahomey. That is a slightly more tolerable coalition without African powers. I'd like to have Eowyn. Just so I have continuous territory, but this province is the goal, so probably just take that. I could release Eowyn and get this province with no aggressive expansion, but I think I would just rather have it now. I think that's also a two-province country, and Morocco's at 28%, another country would probably make them even more mad, so if I was able to integrate Morocco, if their ruler had died, then that probably would get them then, so I'll probably just take this province then. Negative five, like high legitimacy, 69% legitimacy. I have no consort, so I think what I could do... The nobility hate me. Their power is decreasing, their loyalty is also decreasing. They also make 1,700 ducats, which, if you look at the wealth share of the country, is 46% of our country's wealth share. The lower class have 3%, which doesn't seem like a lot, but at the start of the campaign it was about 1%. And it probably rounded up, I would imagine, so... We've tripled the lower class's share of wealth. I feel like a lot of that is because the lower class own 50% of the rural industries and 35% of the urban industries. And the nobility, they only own 27% of the rural industries, but they're able to, through some of their privileges, get money from the peasants. Like, they get 10% of all revenue from the game industry. 10% of re all revenue from the forestry industry, and then an additional 2.5% base rate for all peasantry dues. So they're able to siphon a lot of money from the peasants. So that's where they're getting most of their money from, I imagine. But uh, they kind of hate me right now, so I can't really do much about those. What I can do is marry a noble consort, that would give them, uh, give them a little bit of power, but that's decreasing. That would also give me 50% progress towards stability, plus 10 relations between them and us. One diplomatic rep, and then a 165 consort, plus 10 noble loyalty. I'll actually go ahead and do that. And then when I'm ready to get out of this war, I will do special commissions to loyalists. And then I can also do the disowned popular relative, because my intimacy is 69. So I have enough of a buffer there. I just want to take this province for, like, ducats. Not from the province itself. But from the country. 
I will yield concessions to ancient liberties. And promote anti-competitive practices with the burgers. So I have a heavy ship now, so I'll bring that down here. One heavy can destroy anything that these guys field. Or float, I suppose I should say. Alright, Igbo is nowhere near getting out of the war. Probably because they get free manpower every year. You're gonna give me war reps, ducats, that one province. I also have an extra merchant. Oh wait, before I do that... Grant special commissions. Negative 2% discipline, plus 1% army tradition decay, lose 7.5 army tradition, 15 mil points for 7.5 noble loyalty. That's good. I'm going to have that heavy ship, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this galley because I highly doubt anybody wants to buy this. Never actually tried to sell down here, so maybe. We are a great power. Interesting. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and immediately influence Morocco. All right, would you like to buy a really old galley? They have no use for galleys because galleys are inland sea ships. So that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Then let's send these light ships back. Apparently I still Still have that merchant even without light ships here protecting from the province from provinces. Okay, five trade power from provinces multiplied by one point six due to trade power modifier. Okay, so I'll send those to protect here. And I'll send my merchant there. And that I'll be able to trade here. There's a lot of food production there, and I do own a province there now, so that I'll be able to trade with the rest of my network. So I have a merchant there, merchant there, 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 the Trinian, France, North Sea, or Channel, and North Sea. And one in the Lower Nile, so, so I'm able to trade with all of these nodes now. And uh, that is without trade ideas as well. I have, what, 12,000 men? 12,000 men, I have 8 transport ships. So I'm going to be over my force limit, but I'm just going to go ahead and build 4 transports to get up to my army size. What is my actual... Okay, my force limit is still 12, so... Then I can move my entire army as one unit. This ship will come up here. The good thing about the heavy ship being in this is that it will actually contribute trade power, since the... flagship is in that... stack. Okay, I was thinking about taking off some ships here, but 
We only have 38%, so I think that's... It's okay to have those 15 ships there. We took Tunsburg. Hey, that is the Silver Province. Also, Denmark conquered... You, if you're colorblind, they conquered all this area. They were at war for a while. I just think it's hilarious how I'm able to take all of these provinces and literally nobody cares. Like, England is allied with Norway. And they don't care. I just took half of Norway's country. These expeditions should definitely add some aggressive expansion. We have the risk of being in a personal union. With my luck, that would actually happen. Even though our guy is 47. Our guy is also a military leader. He's unassigned though, so... Hopefully that doesn't, uh... Doesn't kill him just being a military commander. I mean, if you're unassigned, he's not actually doing anything. Maybe it's just the uh, existential dread of potential wartime command that's going to kill him. I could probably, if I was in a personal union under Castile, I could probably beat them for freedom. I think it definitely, assuming it made Castile and France enemies, I could probably play one off the other to get independence. They don't have to do it alone. I can get one of them to join me. Can upgrade seven cogs here. It's not really, not really high priority for me to do that. This harbor is now at ten, so that should be built soon. Get those ships together. We have Algerian separatists. I'll add that to the trade company, should be fine. And then I'll start a modern castle there. And then load up some of these troops to get them back. I also built a castle there. I'm building a castle there, building a castle there. Castling my country up. Like chess. Oh, my force limit is now 11. Delete one unit. It looks like those provinces that we just conquered up here are the ones that are having problems. Sometimes this bar just doesn't fill. It's at 17%, but it's, it doesn't even show up. Oh yeah, okay, so Norway is done. I think Tunsberg has 55,000 peasants. No residents or burgers. It has 165 size mines. I think that's shared, shared between silver and sea salt. The silver mines are 156, though, so that is pretty much all silver. Which produces a little bit of luxury and bouillon. Looks to be about 53 ducats per year. Who owns that? Looks like the state actually owns 40% of the mines. Interesting. The nobles own 21% and the peasants own 27%. But yeah, that's 21 ducats right there from that province. I'll probably keep this province. This province, though, up here is kind of... kind of worthless. It has a little bit of... It actually has decent farmlands, but... 
if Nor Norway wants to buy this province from me, eh, they would pay 84 ducats. Eh, I'll just hold on to it then. I don't think it's giving me any money at all, but 84 ducats, nah, they can do better than that. Sweden want to buy it? Does Denmark want to buy it? See, I wouldn't sell it to Denmark or Sweden, because they have higher miltech than Norway, so I wouldn't be able to get it back. It's interesting to check if they would buy it, though. I was thinking of selling this province to Seuss, because they would pay a lot of money for that, but... I think I'll just hold on to that. They'd pay 472 ducats for that province. They actually give me 0.21 ducats, though. I think I'll just hold on to that for now. We do make 20 ducats a month, so money's not a huge issue right now. This province that I'm colonizing is pretty good. 360 size farmland, 794 size forestries, about 164,000 peasantry. And the peasantry are actually growing 217. They're fleeing the province by about 4,000, but they should be fleeing to other parts of my country, so that's about fine. I think looking at the census, I'm still losing... I think I'm losing a lot of residents. Now granted, for some reason it selects this province, which is uncolonized. This province, apparently the there's 132,000 people here with life, comfort, and luxury needs at 0%. So I think that definitely skews this census a little bit, just because I don't own that province. There's no calculations for the people there yet, so... Something to keep in mind. Our natural change is actually 26,000. I think that's on par on par with uh, Vietnam, if not better at this point, 1475. Granted, I'm expanding a lot more than I was in Vietnam. 425,000 fighting age men. Yeah, those, there's a couple reforms, like this volunteers reform. I don't really need to do this, because we have 20,000 manpower, it's suits. It's good for my needs right now. Doing this reform would add a lot of money. I want to do this one. But that 30 bureaucratic influence, I have to increase my state reach in order to get that because influence is now hard capped based on the power of your estates. So you can't just get bureaucratic influence to 100 if their state reaches, if their state. If their power, which is the same as state reach, is like 2%. Let's look at natural change is about 0 0.021. There's an inward movement about 3,000. So our cities are growing just because of migration. And the burgers are dying. Six burgers are dying every year. We have 18,000. I'll skip wealth. Food, 1,110. So, food, I believe, last, last time I checked, at least, it was about 1,000. So we grew that by about 10%. Demand was around 1,200, so that also grew 10%. So it's like, I'm able to just keep up with food production, but not close the gap between production and demand. Salt so production, I think, was like 180, so I increased that by about 40. Fiber is good. Fuel, that gap is closing, or at least not getting worse. Raw materials, that's a huge boost, actually. That was... I know that was negative. Exotic goods, we're actually producing some exotic goods now, 4.7. So that's good. Consumer, still a deficit. Military is good. Naval is good. Industrial is now good, so that's good. Luxury, that gap closed. And knowledge has a little bit of a deficit, so... Not sure how much this province affects that, but a lot of those gaps closed. Knowledge is still a problem, so I'll go ahead and just throw 10 ducats into all of these cities. 
plus knowledge, uh, producing more knowledge is also good for the next institution, which is casual literacy, which I believe spawns around 1500, even though this says 1450, I think that's just wrong, because it says the year is 1500 right there. This gives some monthly autonomy change, years of separatism, plus 5, global institution spread, and institution spread in true faith provinces, plus 10%. I think the food... See, this province has crop and pasture. Most of the investment is going to pasture. That's the problem. Crop produces more food than pasture, because pasture also produce, produces some salt and fiber and fuel. Crop just produces fi food and a tiny little bit of fiber. But if I put investment in the farmlands in this province, it... I don't know how it's divided, but it doesn't... I can't just go all into crops, so that's pretty unfortunate. I'm uh, limited by the industries that are open in these provinces. I think in this province I just did all investment into game and timber. But those industries are positive, so... What is the... Yeah, there's a good labor difference in this province, so I'll go ahead and put... Like a 30 duck in investment in farmlands in this province, because I don't want to do 100, because I think that's too much. This one is 53 out of 267, so I definitely put some investment in here. It's still positive. It looks like most of that is going into the crop. What is the labor difference in this province? No labor difference, so... I'll put some money into farmlands just once. This province, crop 64, pasture 47, plant fibers 38. 183 out of 384, still positive. I imagine there's no labor shortage in this province. Nope. But, um... 10 ducats there. I don't believe I can do any investment in this province. Nope. The Azores is another province that I'm trying to build up that has decent farmland size. 166, 44 out of 166. Put 10 ducats there. I think this province as well. Oh, 43. 10 out of 43, I'll just leave that alone. These provinces over here, 88 out of 112, negative 14, I'll leave that alone. 9 out of 166, I think I put investment into forestries in this province. What is the labor difference? No labor difference, I'll put uh, 10 ducats in the farmlands here. I have 302 ducats, which one of these provinces? These two provinces don't have irrigation. That one farmland size is 10, this one is 53. Oh, okay. It's not that I own this province, it's that I own this province, but the thumbtack actually goes on this province. Okay, that makes sense. What would irrigation rank 1 in this province cost? Let's do it. I will fund 25% of that irrigation in that province, and uh, I think this is a good point to stop the campaign, so I'll end here and uh, pick it up in the next part. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.